Hello dear students. After studying this module, you shall be able to know what are frontier molecular orbitals, learn about molecular orbital symmetry, identify HOMO and LUMO in various conjugated systems, evaluate the symmetry operations on molecular orbitals and analyze practical applications of frontier molecular orbital theory. Let's start with the introduction. Now electrons in an atom are associated with wave like and particle like character. As a wave, the electrons are defined by a wave function called psi. Square of psi, that is psi square, gives the probability of finding electron in a given space which is close to the definition of an atomic orbital. Comparing the motion of electrons with standing waves, the atomic orbitals, abbreviated as AO, are defined by parameters such as amplitude, phase of wave and a nodal plane. Now you can see the diagram showing the modes of vibration for a standing wave. This diagram shows the first three possible mode of vibrations for particle in a box. As can be seen in the first mode that is psi1, the amplitude of wave increases from 0 to a maximum and then comes back to zero again. For psi 2, the amplitude increases to a maximum, decreases through zero, this is called a node, to a minimum and then back to zero again. Thus here a change in phase of the wave occurs as it, pa as it passes through the node, goes to the minimum and then comes back to zero again. In psi 3 there are two nodes and the phase of the wave changes twice. The displacement above the nodal plane are conventionally designated as plus and those below the nodal plane are designated as minus. Since plus and minus signs are associated with charges also, for the sake of avoiding confusion, the relative phase differences are shown by shading of lobes on a p orbital. Thus for p atomic orbitals the lobes are shown as in the diagram with a plus minus or a shaded and an unshaded lobe. And you can see the dotted line being the nodal plane. Now linear combination of atomic orbitals of comparable energy gives molecular orbitals also called MOs. Before proceeding further, let us first revise the principles of the MO theory that is the molecular orbital theory. Qualitative MO theory was introduced in 1928 by Robert S. Mulliken and Frederick Hunt. According to the MO theory, total number of molecular orbitals is equal to the total number of atomic orbitals from combining atoms. Bonding molecular orbitals have less energy than the constituent AOs before bonding. On the other hand, anti-bonding MOs have more energy than the constituent AOs before bonding. Following both the Pauli exclusion principle and Hund's rule, electrons fill in orbitals of increasing energy. Next, molecular orbitals have maximum bonding interactions when the AOs of comparable energy combine together. Similar to atomic orbitals, molecular orbitals are wave functions giving the probability of finding electrons in certain regions of a molecule. Each molecule orbital can accommodate a maximum of two electrons, each with an opposite spin. The simple hydrogen molecule H2 has two MOs, an antibonding MO and a bonding MO. Compared to the original atomic orbitals, the bonding MO has lower energy and is therefore more stable. 
A bonding orbital can only be formed if the orbitals of the constituent atoms have the same phase. Now this is because the wave functions of electrons of the same phase interfere constrictively which leads to bonding. Thus for ethylene 2 MO that is pi and pi star or bonding and anti-bonding pi MOs arises from the combination of 2 p atomic orbitals. As you can see the LUMO is the anti-bonding with one node and the HOMO is bonding with zero nodes. These are the MOs of ethylene arising from the overlap of 2 p atomic orbitals. In the bonding orbitals of ethylene there is overlap of similar signs in the bonding region between the nuclei. In the anti-bonding orbital, there is cancelling of opposite signs in the bonding region. This cancelling of the wave function is called destructive overlap. Only wave functions with same sign combine together to give constructive overlap. The two pi bonds of 1,3-butadiene are formed by overlap of 4p orbitals on 4 adjacent carbons. The 4p orbitals can combine in 4 different ways to form 4 MOs designated by psi1, psi2, psi3 to psi4. Out of these 4 orbitals, 2 are bonding orbitals that is psi1 and psi2 and two are anti-bonding MOs that is psi 3 star and psi 4 star. The two bonding MOs are lower in energy than the p orbitals from which they have been formed whereas the two anti-bonding MOs are higher in energy than the p orbitals from which they are formed. The diagram shows the MOs of 1,3-butadiene arising from overlap of atomic overlap of 4p orbitals. Here the MOs are arranged in increasing order of energy. As can be seen, the number of nodes increases in a MO. Its corresponding energy will increase. Thus, the MO psi1 has the minimum energy and is without a node. Psi1 orbital has no nodes and all bonding interactions. This can be seen from the diagram. Now this is because the electrons in the bonding orbitals are more delocalized than they were in the AO. This leads in to a decrease in the kinetic energy of the electron. Thus when the orbital contains a node, its kinetic energy is greater than in the AOs. On the other hand, psi4 that is the highest MO has three nodes leading to three anti-bonding interactions. You can see from the diagram below for psi4 which is showing three nodes and all non-bonding interactions. Thus with three nodes psi4 orbital has the maximum energy. Now based on frontier molecular orbital theory that is FMO, the highest energy orbital that contains electrons is called the highest occupied molecular orbital abbreviated as HOMO. In the ground state of 1,3-butadiene, psi2 is the HOMO. The lowest energy orbital that contains no electron is called the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital abbreviated as LUMO. In the ground state of butadiene, 13 butadiene, psi3 star is the LUMO. The three pi bonds of 135 hexatriene are formed by overlap of 6p orbitals on 6 adjacent carbons. The 6p orbitals can combine in 6, in six different ways to form 6 MOs designated from psi1 to psi6. 
In the next figure, we can see the MOs of 135 hexatriene arising from the overlap of the six atomic orbitals, p orbitals. As you can see, psi1 has zero nodes, psi2 has one node, psi3 with two nodes is the HOMO, psi3 with two nodes is the HOMO, psi4 star is antibonding and it is the LUMO and it has three nodes, psi5 star has four nodes and psi6 star has five nodes. Out of the six MOs, three are hence bonding MOs that is psi1, psi2 and psi3 and three are anti-bonding MOs namely psi4 star, psi5 star and psi6 star. In the ground state electronic configuration, the six pi electrons occupy the three bonding MOs that is psi3 is the HOMO and psi4 star is the LUMO. In the excited state which results from electron promotion from psi3 to psi4 star, psi4 star is the HOMO and psi5 star is the LUMO. Now in the allyl system, it could be cation, anion or radical. It has three carbons and three p orbitals. Hence, three MOs are involved. For the allyl system, three new MOs are obtained by the linear combination of one MO of ethylene and one isolated p orbital. This means that we need to look at the results of the pi plus minus p and pi star plus minus p interactions. It depicts the MOs of allyl system arising from overlap of the MO in the ethylene molecule and one isolated p orbital giving us psi1 bonding, psi2 non-bonding and psi3 anti-bonding orbital. The unique features hence are 1. The allyl system has odd number of orbitals that is 3p orbitals. 2. The system has one non-bonding MO whose energy is always equal to the unhybridized p orbital. The non-bonding MO is central molecule orbital of the system. Number 3. In non-bonding molecular orbital, the nodal plane passes through the carbon nucleus. The MOs of the allyl system apply equally well to the allyl cation, allyl radical and allyl carbonion because all the three species contain the same p orbitals. These species differ only in the number of pi electrons. Next, let us talk about orbital symmetry and frontier molecular orbital theory, abbreviated as FMO. Now, the FMO theory is a simpler way to look at the molecular orbitals of a conjugate system based on highest occupied MO as one component and the LUMO of the second component in a pericyclic reaction. The electrons in the HOMO of a molecule are like the outer shell electrons of an atom. They can be removed most easily with the least expenditure of energy because they are already in a higher energy level than any of the other electrons in the molecule. The LUMO of a molecule is the orbital to which electrons can be transformed with the least expenditure of energy. The higher is the energy of HOMO of a molecule, the more easily electrons can be removed from it. The lower is the energy of the LUMO of the molecule, the more easily electrons can be transferred into it. HOMO and LUMO are referred to as 
frontier molecular orbitals. Also, HOMO or LUMO becomes the most important orbitals for consideration since they are closest in energy and make a significant contribution to lowering of transition state energy as they interact. For a given molecule, HOMO and LUMO have opposite symmetries. Now let us talk about orbital symmetry. There are various symmetry operations that can be performed on orbitals to determine their symmetry characteristics. The symmetry operations allow classifying the molecular energy states and molecular orbitals with respect to the symmetry transformations of the molecule. That is, we can predict the reactions a molecule can undergo. The most important symmetry elements are 1. Mirror plane A pi molecular orbital possesses either a mirror plane symmetry or a center of symmetry. Both symmetries are not present together in a given pi molecular orbital. Some molecular orbitals have the symmetry about the mirror plane designated as M which bisects the molecular orbitals and is perpendicular to the plane of the molecule as you can see in the diagram. Here both the orbitals have a plane of symmetry. In the second diagram there is no plane of symmetry. Now let us talk about C2 symmetry. The center of symmetry is a point in the molecular axis from which if imaginary lines are drawn on one side and extended on an equal distance on the other side, they will meet the same phases of the orbitals as can be seen in the diagram. Both orbitals are hence symmetrical with respect to the center of the molecular axis. Now for the 1,3-butadiene system, let us classify the orbitals as symmetric and antisymmetric with respect to mirror plane and axis of symmetry. A table, table 1, for the classification of orbitals in 1,3-butadiene as symmetric abbreviated as S and antisymmetric abbreviated as A. The first column is for psi 4 star which has three nodes. For mirror plane it is antisymmetric. For the C2 that is axis of symmetry it is symmetric. Psi 3 star has two nodal planes. It is symmetric with respect to mirror plane and antisymmetric with respect to axis of symmetry. Psi 2 with one nodal plane is antisymmetric and symmetric with respect to mirror and axis of symmetry respectively. And Psi 1 with no nodal plane is symmetric and antisymmetric with respect to mirror plane M and axis of symmetry C2 respectively. Correlation diagrams use elements of symmetry as a guiding rule which should be preserved throughout the reaction for a pericyclic reaction. It is assumed that an orbital in the starting material must feed into an orbital of same symmetry in the product. Therefore, if the number of orbitals of each symmetry type is not the same in the reactants as in the products, that reaction will not take place readily. Now let us talk about the application of orbital symmetry, that is the Woodward-Hoffman rules. Woodward and Hoffman established the principle of conservation of orbital symmetry which predicts that certain pericyclic reactions are allowed and others are forbidden. 
It has been reported that the orbital symmetry rules apply only to concerted reactions. Based on the rules of conservation of orbital symmetry, that is the correlation diagrams, Woodward and Hoffman were the first one to deduce a set of rules to define feasibility of reactions and stereochemistry of products formed in pericyclic reactions. According to the Woodward-Hoffman rules, the reactions in which symmetry of MO is conserved involve a relatively low energy transition state and thus are symmetry allowed. In contrast, in the reactions which symmetry of orbitals is destroyed by bringing one or more orbitals out of phase, the energy of transition state becomes too high due to an anti-bonding interaction and the reaction becomes symmetry forbidden. Another important foundation of the rules is the fact that thermally allowed reactions are, form, are forbidden photochemically and vice versa. Also, the products formed as a result of thermal tractions have opposite stereochemistry than products of a photochemical reaction. It is important to note that symmetry forbidden reaction might as well proceed if sufficient energy is provided to the reaction. The generalized Woodward Hoffman rule states that in a thermal pericyclic reaction, the total number of 4q plus 2 s's and 4r a components must be odd. For illustration of the rule, a component is a bond or orbital taking part in a pericyclic reaction as a single unit. A double bond is a pi 2 component. The number 2 refers to the number of electrons in the system. The prefix pi indicates the type of electrons. A single component may have any number of electrons. A diene has is a pi 4 component but may not have mixtures of S and P electrons. The designation 4Q plus 2 and 4R refer to the number of electrons in the component where Q and R are integers. An alkene is a pi 2 component and so it is of the 4Q plus 2 kind. A diene is a pi 4 component and so is of the 4R kind. The suffix S stands for suprafacial and the suffix A for antrafacial. A suprafacial component forms new bonds on the same phase at both ends while an antrafacial component forms new bonds on opposite phases at both ends. Finally, let us have a look at the application of Woodward Hoffman rules based on FMO theory proposed by Fuki. The Diels Alder reaction, a 4 plus 2 cycloaddition between malic anhydride and cyclopentadiene, is a superficial reaction with one 4q plus 2 s component and no 4r a component, which means the reaction is allowed thermally. The HOMO of butadiene and the LUMO of ethylene is both anti-symmetric. Both are rotationally symmetric, meaning thereby the reaction is allowed. To summarize what we have learnt in this module, 1. Due to wave-like nature of electrons, atomic orbitals are defined by parameters such as amplitude, phase and nodal plane. 2. Linear combination of atomic orbitals of comparable energy gives rise to molecular orbitals. 3. Presence of nodes in a molecular orbital increases its energy. 4. Compared to original atomic orbitals, a bonding molecular orbital has lower energy and is therefore more stable. 4. The allyl system has a bonding, a non-bonding and an anti-bonding molecular orbital. 5. The highest energy orbital that contains electrons is called 
the highest occupied molecular orbital HOMO whereas the lowest energy orbital that contains no electrons is called the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital LUMO. HOMO and LUMO are referred to as frontier molecular orbitals. HOMO or LUMO of two molecules are closest orbitals in energy and make a significant contribution to lowering of the transition state energy as they interact. For a given molecule, HOMO and LUMO have opposite symmetries. Next, the symmetry operations that is mirror plane and axis of symmetry allow classifying the molecular energy states and molecular orbitals with respect to symmetry transformations of the molecule. Woodward and Hoffman established the principle of conservation of orbital symmetry which predicts that certain pericyclic reactions are allowed and others are forbidden. Woodward Hoffman rules are based on orbital symmetry conservation and lastly symmetry forbidden reaction might as well proceed if sufficient energy is provided to the reaction. That's all. Thank you.